Hello, I am Ragnarok, and welcome to The Reckoning. So today we are doing Episode 2 of Season 2 Playthrough, Age of Calamus Mod for Conan Exiles the Game. Finally. So, uh, in the last episode, we made a new character. Um, we picked our faction, we picked a location, and we showed how to start creating, crafting in your faction's builds. Uh, so since that update... Uh, I haven't played, I've only played enough to build our base, which is a lot bigger than I normally would build a starter base. I like to move around a lot, uh, but because for the sake of the video and sake of just showing off a lot of stuff, I figured we'll be here for a little bit. Also, since the last update, uh, the Funcom has released the official update with mounts, thrall leveling, new combat system, new combat role, and a bunch of other stuff. So we're going to finally get experience of that. Part of the reason why I was holding off on episode two was for that update and then I had to get a couple other uh, videos out first and we had some technical difficulties but all better now next this episode um, I'm actually gonna film episode three literally right after this one I'm just gonna stop and then restart recording so we'll have the uh, episodes coming out a little bit faster in succession which is gonna be great and um, let's get into this episode and have some fun so as you can see we crafted a base it's pretty big and let's show it off in the front. Someone's building over there. Actually, that was already there. So, what we have is, you can see this base. This is a tier 1 base. So, the really cool thing is, if you're new to the game and you're not aware of it, once you start once you start the game and you get the basic building pieces, which is pretty, level, or, um, pretty early, we're level 18 because we built this base and we leveled a good amount. However, you can pretty much make all these building pieces as of level 9. So the really, really, really cool thing is that you can build this pretty much from the start of the game. The only difference is, is depending on if you have a modded, non-modded, vanilla, whatever, um, it and or uh, low level to high level is the amount, the types of pieces you can do. The higher level you are, you'll have DLC build pieces. You'll have tier one, three, one, two, three, and four. Um, so you'll have a lot more variations of stuff you can like types of materials you can build your bases out of, but the build pieces themselves are all the same. Every tier has a window and a solid wall and a door and a fence and a, a ceiling tile and stairs, and they all are the same. So it's really, really cool that you can pretty much build if, I mean, if you don't mind spending a bunch of time uh, grinding the mats, you can actually build a massive, You could I could build a humongous castle on this lake if I really wanted to. It would just take a long time. Now, the difference between, the reason I say it takes a long time is because if you're using a stone pick, you're going to get less mats. You're going to get like six to eight hit uh, stone per hit, at least on the server I'm playing on. My harvest rate's a little higher. Um, if I use a steel or an iron one, I'm going to get like 10 to 12 per hit, I believe it is. Don't hold me to those numbers. But again, my server, the, the online server we're play, I'm playing on is a little higher. But the cool thing is, so it's basically, you still get mats. You can get the same types of mats. You just get more per hit. Plus, your my pick's going to break less. The iron pick has more durability than the stone pick. And then as you tear up, hardened steel, star metal, so forth and so forth. So the higher level you are, the faster you can actually gather the base mats to build stuff like this. So let's just say I'm max level 120. I could probably build this in like 15, 20 minutes. Uh, if it, that might, that might even be too long. Uh, whereas this actually took me like an hour and a half to build, uh, maybe two hours. That was like an hour and a half. Oh, probably should use my pick on this guy. So what we're going to go over first, I'm going to get up here so I don't get attacked by any more crocs. Let's check this out. So as far as attribute points, grit, grit and strength are my priority. I put a couple points. I put five points into encumbrance. I'm getting a plus four because the armor I'm wearing gives an encumbrance boost. If I actually take off this armor, no more plus four. So there you go. That's without the armor. So as you can see, there's a good reason to make armor. And certain types of armor will give different pluses to different attributes. So sometimes you want to make a specific armor based on what attribute you want. Um, I usually make encumbrance armors for when I'm gathering or building. And then I'll do thing. I'll usually do vitality or strength attributes uh, for combat. I usually try to stick with vitality unless I the armor I want to wear is kind of into strength. As far as feet points, as I said before, as these unlock, you want to definitely get them. These are your faction feats. My next one's not for another two levels, level twenty, and that's where I'll be able to build stone or brick of my my build. So this will be the tier two build. 
The next thing you want to make sure you unlock is your armor. As you can see, I have all the DLC armors right here. And these are DLC armors. Yamatai, Turan, Riddle of Steel. That's uh, the Platane, Pictish, Catan. The Guardian is the um, Dekerto. That's the Dekerto, Dekerto, Aquilonian. Next thing you want to do is make sure you have a weapon unlocked. We unlocked this in the first episode, and I unlocked a secondary weapon. I like to have two weapons on me at all times uh, for different scenarios. I unlocked this one. The main reason is I like to use axes as my like one-on-one -on -one weapon, and then for the crowds, I use hammers. Uh, the new combat system, I haven't played. They changed up the weapons a little bit, so I'm going to play around with some of the weapons throughout these episodes. Next one I'll go into is the bread and butter. You're going to want to make sure you have Artcraft, Apothecary, and Stone Mason. These three are very important. This one will become more important, but you don't really need it off the bat if you need the points. These two, bedding, and then this is the big one right here. So the one you want to start off, the very first one you want to get is your blacksmith and your iron tools. Then you can craft iron tools. You'll get mats faster, uh, and they'll break less. Then I would start going into the carpenter, tanner, fireball cauldron, and then journeyman butcher. As soon as you get that, that'll help you get hides. Down here, you basically, you don't need to get these two these two are just bigger versions of this, so you could just get this to save your points if you didn't have points to get anything else. But I do eventually get these just because you can cook more things in this fire than you can this fire. Uh, Fisher, the second you unlock it at level 17, definitely get that. Make sure you get a box. Make sure you get your Thrall Taker and Stable Master right off the bat as soon as you can at level 15 and level 10 appropriately. This one you can get if you want. It doesn't really matter. I get Furniture Maker. That lets me make decorations. You can If you're not really going to into decorating your base that early game, don't bother. And if you are doing, uh, if you have Age of Calamitous, you don't have to get any of these build types. A lot of people spit waste points in these. There's no reason. I mean, this tier one is the same as this tier one. This is the faction modded tier one, whereas the other one is the vanilla. The faction modded one, let me put my clothes back on. The faction modded ones are pretty much the same, more or less. Uh, the HP is a little different which is good. You will sometimes get more experience for, um, or actually in most cases you get more experience for building Age of Calamity stuff than you will vanilla stuff. However, there's no reason to unlock the vanilla stuff unless you actually want to build in this stuff. I usually don't unlock the vanilla until I get to level 30 because once I unlock these, it actually unlocks all the DLC builds all at once. So I really don't care about unlocking anything in this area until I'm level 30. When I can, when I want to start building tier, uh, DLC stuff, just for sake of building DLC stuff. If you don't have any DLCs, don't worry about it. So next thing we do is I make furnaces. I put some wood in there for fuel, and we put iron ore in here. Let's see, I got some iron ore in here. Let's put some more here. You put fuel, iron ore, and make steel bars. Do I have any stone? I don't. If you put stone in here with a fuel, it turns the stone into brick automatically. There's no recipe that you click on. You just put stone in here, and it turns it into brick. The next thing I'll do is I'll actually... Ooh, I actually should show that. Let's see. Let's do this. Let me grab a couple things real quick so we can actually show off a little trick. Let me go upstairs. As you see, I, like to, I put everything in very tight quarters. The reason I do that... Um, is mainly just, it's, so I don't have to build this big. Now, obviously I built, this base is pretty massive. Um, I could do a base probably half the size and only one floor and still fit all these stations. You just wouldn't have, you wouldn't have a lot as much room, but you can do it. So what I wanted to show you is this. A lot of people don't know about this. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put a hundred wood in here. I'm gonna hit play. We'll look at the fuel time up here. 41 minutes, roughly, right? All right. Now let's put 100 branches. 20 minutes. So about half the time, right? Arc. 100. 1 hour, 23 minutes. So now we're about double. So bark is better than wood. Wood is better than branches. Now, a lot of people don't know this, and this only works in age of calamitous stations that require a fuel source. So right here is the white oak wood. This is what you go into the enchantment station that we showed in the last episode, and you convert wood 
into this. There's no cost to convert it. It just takes a look a little bit of time and it's pretty fast. So this is essentially the same as this, right? But it's, this is the modded version of wood. So white oak wood We hit play 10 hours. So for no cost and just a couple seconds, so I guess a couple seconds of cost, uh, you can convert hundred pieces of wood into a hundred white oak wood and get, I don't even know how many times that is. You can, you all can do the math, but it's a lot. So white oak wood is the best fuel source in age of calamitous stations only. If I put white oak wood in the furnace right here, it's not going to do anything. It's just actually, I can show you. It's not going to do anything. Take this out, put this in, see play. It won't let, it won't even let me hit play. Put this back, put that in and there you go play. So use white oak wood as your fuel. You'll definitely see like that hundred or 500. 52 hours and now or of course your times are gonna be a little different fuel time on the online server i play on i think is like two and a half or three times so it's definitely higher but i mean regardless it doesn't really matter you're not your numbers that you get for 100 pieces may not be the same but white oak is still more than wood bark and branches so and it's 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 more than oil and all the other fuel, uh, fuel sources you can have so what i did down here you want to make these first and this one then i would say you're going to want to do your tannery tannery you put bark in it that's your fuel you put hides in it it turns hides into leather and tar so that's how you get that your this station you're going to actually want to create consult stone consolidate which helps you make the heart the uh, tier three brick the hardened brick and steel fire um and that's going to help you build uh make steel bars when you get high enough level to make steel Carpenter's bench is for shaped wood, and that's also where you're going to make your stables when we can actually make our stables, which we can actually make at this point. So let's do that. So I think, what else do I need? Twine. I put twine over here, right? Nope. There. Yep. There you go. There we go. Let's put the stables out, and we'll, we'll put them outside somewhere. Ah, that's going to take a few minutes. We'll come back. <laughs> this room, I have my bed. Um, I have my gym crafting bench and my alchemy desk. The alchemy desk is where you're going to make the Age of Calamitous powders. A lot of people always ask, where do you make moon dust, Elricum dust, uh, mystical dust, arcane essence? That's all made in your alchemy desk. To do this, you have to have the feet unlocked. We'll need that because of the faction we pi uh, picked. Up here, I have all my... So downstairs is all my raw stations. I take raw ore, raw wood, raw whatever, and I put it into a station... And I make stuff up here is where I take that refined material and I make it into other stuff. So I take like my iron bars and I make iron reinforcements I t or I, I make weapons and armors. I take. Here's the armor one. And then outside this door is my fire where I'm going to cook stuff in. That's why I made the big one, because there's a lot more slots in this for cooking. Last piece, which we'll show, and then we're going to make some armor this way is the reason I said to make your fishing traps. As you can see, I have a lot of fishing traps. I made a little platform raised. And the main reason is so I don't have to go all the way down here to the ground and get my fish traps and go up because I'd have to go up and down a bunch of times. It's a lot easier just to do it like this. And the reason I do that is because I'm going to go into the shellfish traps. And I, I've put these out, actually put these out uh, like two days ago before I was able to film this. So this is probably about two days. I believe this is about two days worth of, um, maybe it's three days. But either way, you lay these down, they automatically generate fish. So the fish traps generate fish. And the shellfish traps generate shellfish. Now, the reason we do this. We're going to take those. And we're going to go inside. The fish we're going to leave alone for now because I actually don't have the crafting station I need for the fish when we get that far we'll show it uh out here this way and the reason we show this is unappetizing fish I should just take that out you hit play shrimp so we're, we're cooking one shrimp right now one shrimp equals one cooked shrimp and one ichor this is literally the best way to get ichor in the game the reason is the Ikor you're going to need to make stone consolidant, which you need to make hardened brick, which is any tier three or tier four build. So this is something you're going to need a lot of. Now, there are other ways to get it. Um, once you have better uh, gathering tools, there are easier ways than doing this. But if you have 10 traps out there, you're going to have tens of thousands of Ikor. 
and you can just put all that you can line this whole thing with shrimp and you'll have so much of this that you won't have anything to do. I actually end up with I do this so often and the reason I do the lobsters is because lobster I use this for two things early game the lobster is a lot better for eating than the uh, grilled steak and it's obviously uh, also self replenishes because I have to actually kill animals for the grilled steak and then get the meat from the body bring the meat here and cook it this doesn't give as much life regeneration when you eat it whereas I get a lot more for the um, lobsters the ex uh, exotic shell shellfish also these are going to auto generate from my shellfish traps down there I have 10 of them so right now I have 10 of them so I got what 500 we'll just say 500 we'll just say 500 it was like 560 whatever but 500 times 10 of them, I have 5,000 lobster. What I end up doing with this is I use lobster in my Wheel of Pains, which, again, we'll probably show in this episode or next one. Um, and then I use them for food until I find a better food source. This is not the best one in the game, but it's probably the best one you can get early off. Okay, so now we have the armor's bench. And with the armor's bench, what we're going to do is we're going to go into it, and we're going to make some armor. So I'm just going to show you how to make it. What we're going to do is we're going to make the medium armor for the new DLC that came out, the Potain. Um, so basically what you need is it just shows you need iron bars, which we make we made in the furnace already. We need leather that's in the tan station, and we need medium boot linings. Now, if you pick heavy armor, it's heavy boot linings. If you choose light armor, wherever that is, that is there. It's light boot linings. The, the extra materials are ex different. Now, if you want to know, okay, where do I make these linings? They're also in the station. So right here, here's your heavy ones. Just takes a bunch of thick leather. Uh, your light ones are also in here. There they are. There's light. And here's my medium. And these are the ones we need to make. So to make leather, we need two hands, two feet, helmet, pants, chest. And then all I need is leather and twine. Twine's easy. We make out of the plant fiber, and which I have, I have actually a bunch of twine downstairs already, and also leather. So let's get that. Okay, so... We made the medium armor padding, and we made, turned it into the armor. Let's take it on. I also, also went downstairs and got the stable. That finished crafting. Let's put it all into... Oops, that's not what we wanted to do. And there we go. Now, this is what I look like. I actually really like this armor. This DLC is... Actually, I'm very impressed. Um, I like the armor. I've always liked the like knights in type armor and uh, plate mail and stuff like that. Plus, it's got some chain mail and leather, but it just I think it works really, really well. Now, the helmet I'm not too fan of. I'm not actually a big helmet person. I know a lot of people are, which is nothing wrong with that. I'm just not. Now, you probably won't be able to do this in the actual normal game. However, um, we also on the server I play on, we have another mod called the Fashionist mod, um, and that actually lets you hide armor slots. Or what you can also do with it is. You can actually put, without actually putting the armor in there, you can put other armor in here, and it will show you that's what you're wearing. So it's a kind of a cool mod if you're... There it is. So even though I'm getting the stats, it, I am actually wearing this armor. This is what I'm actually getting stats, but it'll visually show what's over here, or you can actually choose to hide what's over there in general. So for me, I don't like helmets but i want the extra armor bonus and protection that the helmet gives me so i have this mod on here however if you don't have this mod you're playing vanilla game you're not gonna be able to hide it either way then wear the helmet <laughs> or don't i sometimes actually when i on the servers i play on that don't have that mod i just sometimes just roll without a helmet and deal with the loss of uh armor value it's all personal choice the next thing we need to do is we need to go down here and get some iron bars which i have in here Go back upstairs. Uh, actually, I think we're going to need a little leather, too. So I'm going to grab some of that. And we need to make ourselves some iron stuff. Oh, we already got iron bars in here. Start crafting that stuff real quick. And we need to make ourselves an iron axe. An iron skinny knife. An iron cleaver. We need to make ourselves... And we'll use the new DLCs. We'll make ourselves an iron weapon because we don't we don't want to use a stone maul anymore. And where's their axe? Uh, yeah, let's make their axe too. The new DLC axe. Why not? So as you can see, we're making all iron stuff. I'm actually just going to drop this. No, normally I would store the stuff. 
Um, but because it's all stone, we'll just drop it in the ground. We're not going to ever keep that. So we'll just wait for that to go. And then we'll have, we'll be kitted out with iron. Now, the real cool thing about that is as things break, and this actually is the same with most of the stuff, uh, as long as the base of whatever it is, um, you can actually repair it in your inventory. So as my I'm picking iron nodes or stone or whatever I'm using my pickaxe for or pick for, um, as it loses durability, before, as long as you do it before it breaks, before it reaches zero, as long as I'm carrying iron bars in my inventory, I can actually right-click on it or go here, more repair. So right now, actually, it's 289, as you can see, right? So if I hit repair, you see a little cog wheel down here, and now it's 300. So as long as you... And it took one bar away. Now... How much durability loss will depend on how many bars you have. If this was down to, like, five, it probably would have taken, like, six or seven bars or whatever. I mean, it's whatever. So you'll figure that out as you play. But you definitely want to have some with you to repair. You, I mean, the worst thing that happened is you'll be in the middle of a fight. Your only weapon or your main weapon breaks, and now you have to run away. Or you're in the middle of grinding a bunch of iron would at a somewhere far you ran to and then your pick breaks and you're like well i'm not fully encumbered yet but now i have to run back to get it repaired so just make sure you carry stuff to actually repair on you all right we'll go out the front door upstairs and let's put the stable down wow, this thing's big uh hmm Be nice if I built that in the water, huh? Uh, let's see. We may do it like sideways like this. Kind of like that. Kind of have to back up. Nope. So once you place it, it's placed. The main reason I did it close to the water is because I can do like this per defensive perimeter of fences around it. So we'll probably do that. So what we need now is we need a horse. So let us go find a horse. Okay, so here we are. We found ourselves a, a, a foal, I believe they're called. Um, so I'll show you where we are on the map. We're right here. So our base is right here where the bed is. You can actually, the cool thing about when you put a bed or a bed roll down and it's your active one, it will actually show on the map where it is. So we know that's where our base is. So we're not too far. Um, there was, when, it, when the patch was first dropped, I know there were some over here and on these islands right here. Um, I heard that they removed that or they're temporarily not there. Uh, so right now, the closest place to where I build that I know there are horses are right here. I also know there are some up here. Um, I believe, I want to say there's some up in the savannah area, but I know there's some over here by the aqueduct up in the green. Those are the only places I really know of. I think someone told me that you can get them over like this area also. Uh, I'm sure there's a lot more places still. There's probably, maybe at some point we'll do a video on where to find them all once I figure out where to find them all. But this place, I know there are some. Oh, where'd you go? Did it walk away from me? <laughs> Where did it go? There it is. Uh, so we happen to come here, and I just went down, up and down the shore, and I saw this one. So we're going to go grab it. You go up to it, and you hit your use key, and we have a sturdy fowl. Okay, it's pretty heavy, though. That's... Hmm. So what we'll do... Aha. Thankfully, we still have our other armors on us. Uh, these give us bonus to um, encumbrance, so we're able to carry a little bit more. So now we'll make our way back to, and as you can see, there's the sturdy fowl. Let's see if we can find another one real quick. If we can't, we'll we'll just spend a quick second running up and down the coast, see if we can find one more. Because um, I wouldn't mind the swift one, because I know there are three variations, the sturdy, the swift, and then the regular, I believe it's, it is. Um, and I'm assuming the swift one is going to have a better, less stamina drain, or whatever they're calling it. Or maybe it's faster. I don't know. Oh, there's another one. Let's see if I highlight it, if it actually tells me what it is. Nope. So we actually have to take it. Sturdy Swift. Okay, so we're going to drop off the... We're going to drop the sturdy, sturdy one, and we'll keep the Swift. All right, let's go back to our base. Okay, so here we are, back at our base, in front of our little stable. And what we're going to do is we're going to click on it. We're going to drag our horse in there. And he needs a food. So we're going to plant fiber. And as you see, it already took away one. We put 750 in there and it went to 749. 
and it's crafting. So basically all you do is you put in a food, some kind of plant, I assume for a horse. Um, I saw this on the Funcom video, so I knew plant uh, plant fibers will work. There, I'm not sure if it's the same as the Thrall system. It doesn't matter what food you put in there. It does not change how fast they break. Uh, and un from my understanding, unlike the animal pet system, there are different foods you can feed your animals. Like if you get yourself, uh, actually if you get one of those guys or something like that, or you get like a wolf or a bear, if you feed it a better quality food, you have a higher quality of getting like a greater bear, which is like a kind of, you kind of think of like an epic or legendary version of that animal. It's a little different, better statted. There are no different variations of these that you get based on your food. A horse is a horse. There are different stats you're going to get on them because they're followers however the stats from my understanding so far at least as we know it there's no greater chance of getting better stats the better food you get so we'll figure that out as a time we'll see how that unfolds if you're familiar or you've verified personally not heard from someone but actually tested verified a couple times to verify that it's the data is proper um leave it in the comment section I'm, I'm interested if anybody's actually done some proper testing on that um, and not just harder through the grapevine. So now what we're going to do is let's go get some mats. Okay, so we're, where we are right now on the map is right over here. As you can see, we're right across from where our bed is on the side. Right over there is where that place where I showed you you get all the iron. So we ran up this way. Just be careful because there is a mini boss or a world boss over there. So you want to be careful. But we're running up here. And as you see, a lot of people put some wheels here because there's a lot of thrall camps. That's why I like this area specifically. And as you can hear behind me, there are spiders. Now you can use your skin and knife on the spiders and you get yourself some chitin. You can use your pick on them and get yourself some icor and some chitin. The main reason we came over here is because in these caves Oop, okay. there are iron nodes as you can see so another reason why this area is a really great starter place to build is because there are a lot of iron nodes over here there's some in that camp there's a bunch in these caves now the reason I showed the ones in the camp first and last episode is because those ones do not require you to fight at all whereas you're not gonna be able to get the iron in these caves without fighting all these spiders and as you can see they're a lot, and they will rush you as soon as you... I'm out of stamina. Now, what we should be doing is using our pick on these guys. As you can see, getting a lot of Icor. But the reason we came here is for this. This nice little yellowish stone. And this is brimstone now you're gonna need a lot of brimstone to turn your iron nodes into steel nodes now granted i can't do anything with steel yet i can make steel reinforcements which are required for some of the um age of calamitous stuff um that i can make off the bat but for the most part i can't do anything with uh steel until i'm level 30 as far as making like steel weapons uh steel tools and stuff like that but you don't want to wait till you're level 30 to get that the sooner you can like have all this stuff going automatically like right now we have all that ichor being made uh in the fireplace we have our fish traps generating more fish we have iron bars cooking we have i'm turning some iron bars into iron reinforcements for tier two builds um i have some stone being turned into brick for tier two builds so i have all that stuff going so once you hit that level you can boom start and really interesting and cool part about that is, is once you have all that stuff going and you have it all ready as soon as I hit the appropriate level for, say, like, for uh, Tier 2 building, level 20, and then Tier th uh, Steel at level 30, the really interesting part about all that is, is that I'll start building my... I'll turn my entire base into a Tier 2 build, and while I'm crafting those Tier 2 pieces, I'm going to level a bunch. So you're going to... Making these mats are going to help you level faster to your whatever level you're trying to get to. So like in my example, I'm trying to get to level 20. So making steel fire and steel iron bars and brick and stuff like that, that's all going to help me le uh, level faster to level 20 because you get experience for all, everything you do in this game. And then once I get there, if I can make, say, like 100 foundations or 100 tier 2 walls, you're probably going to get a couple levels off that stuff. So 
w once you really get going in this game, you'll notice that certain s certain points you're gonna pretty much um, you're gonna you're gonna skip real fast. Like maybe for example, we'll just say level fifty, level sixty, maybe like really, really, really slow going. But se second you get to level sixty and you can craft a different tier, you might get from level sixty to seventy like in f ten minutes because you you're crafting so many pieces. Um, but then like, so maybe 70, 80 is slow. So you'll see certain points will be faster than others. Just have it all going early. Cause trust me, that's the weird, worst thing to do is you, you start crafting, um, you start doing something like you're crafting, you, you, you want to make a specific armor that you just unlocked and you realize, oh, I need rhino hides. And now you have to spend a half hour running to somewhere that has rhino hides and then killing enough rhinos and skinning them to get enough hides. It's easier just to have all the mats already. So here we are. Uh, we I let some time pass since the last, uh, where we last were in the video. Um, our horse finished breaking. Uh, basically it became, it turned in, it went here. It turned into, um, you can see the symbol was a little different. I dragged my inventory. And just like placing a thrall, you put this, you put it in your hot bar and you drag it and put it down. Kind of like this. Moving guard. So you get to place it. Once you place it down, it is now a follower. It, you can no longer pick it up and put return it to your inventory. At most, you can break bond. Don't do that because if you break bond, that basically dismisses it. It's the same as like killing. It's just a, a way the game... It, you're deleting it from you. It, it's essentially you're saying, oh, you're free to go and it goes. Essentially, you're just destroying it. Um, so we have a couple things. Let's check out our horse's stats. So we got, looks like uh, 1,073 is the base for a horse. Uh, this horse is pretty statted, actually. It looks like uh, vitality is its highest stat. 64 agility, 64 strength. That's pretty nice. These numbers are going to be all random, depending on what horse you drop. Also, there are four base horses, from my understanding. There's a brown, there's a white, or it's like a spotted white. It's like white and gray. There's a tan one, and then there's this one. Um... The skin that you'll get for the horse are all going to be random, from my understanding. And the last thing we need to do is go into the inventory. I already already put a plant fiber into it. That's the food. Uh, from my Again, I believe the food system is kind of glitched right now, and they're actually not eating. They should be, though. That will give them uh, a stat boost. That will eventually work in. I also went to the... In the meantime, I was playing and getting some mats and stuff like that. We leveled to level 20, so we unlocked... The saddle from the armor thing you have to actually make the saddle saddlers work work table and then you can actually make the saddles in it it just takes some iron some leather and some twine so that's a good reason to make iron bars and leather and once you have that hold interact bring up the inventory drag the saddle over and now a horse has a saddle execute to get on and look at that now we're on a horse get our weapon out and let's see what we can go destroy. Crocs are probably going to be a little hard because they're kind of low to the ground, I would assume. Oh, well, we could try, I guess, right? Looks like our level, our follower leveled up. We barely did anything. Oh, I guess we can fight these things. Ooh, humans. There you go. And you use the crouch key to get off your horse. And one thing you want to do, especially if you're in the Age of Calamitous mod, is you want to skin all the humans. The main reason is because you get hide from humans, and you also get some coin. It's actually one of the best ways, especially early game, to get coin. The Age of Calamitous coins, you'll be able to use those later when you can craft mar uh, merchants. Also, human flesh, you want to hold on to this. This is actually kind of like a currency also in the Age of Calamitous mod. But anyways, let's get back on the horse, and let's go back 
to where our base is, which is this way. And our horse took a good amount of damage. It is low level. So, I mean, we can kind of... We're going to have to just take that into account. I'd say probably about half his HP went went away fighting those things. So, I wouldn't suggest fighting things early game unless you know you can beat them. And those things really weren't too crazy. Not a lot of damage. If we were fighting something a little more sturdy, that might have been a problem for the horse. There you go. There's our horse update. So we should probably name it something, right? Let's see. Um, There. Nope. Inventory? Yep, there it is. Horse. What should we name our horse? Uh, let's see. Well, we are Ragnarok. So let's call it Mornir. Right? There you go. There's our horse. Okay, so we'll call that the end of this episode. Like I said, I'm going to continue filming for the next episode. Uh, so we'll probably be right into it right after this from this scene. Uh, but we'll call it the end of that one. So basically we went through stations, what stations craft, how to craft some of the beginning stuff. Uh, we also went over how to get a horse and how to raise it and all that stuff. So kind of cool. I really, really like it. I think this horse update is going to be fantastic. I think mounts are going to be fun. Leveling them up is actually the part I'm most excited about, so I'll be very interested to see how, once we get a couple levels into this horse, uh, what kind of perks the horse gets and stuff like that. So uh, stay tuned for the next episode on that one. If you like the video and you want to see the next one, be notified as soon as it drops. Make sure you hit that sub button. Also, if you like the video, hit the like button. It does help with the channel greatly. If you have any questions or comments or anything like that, leave in the comment section below. I do read all the comments. Special shout-out to our Patreon crew, our elite Patreon crew, for the uh, extra special support. Uh, for the month i really do appreciate you all if you're interested in being part of the patreon crew or checking out the cool things you can unlock or get um definitely go over to the patreon channel we have a link in the description below also we stream on twitch and have an amazing discord community where we actually have access to our discord members to the server that i'm currently playing on for this video and uh, i play on uh when i stream on twitch also uh links for both of those are in the description below otherwise i will see you guys on the next episode stay tuned for that and as always fear the reckoning